Carl T. Bergstrom, Calling Bullshit, The Art of Skepticism in a Data-Driven World. In the age of instant information and social media, the spread of misinformation is becoming increasingly common, and, Calling Bullshit, The Art of Skepticism in a Data-Driven World by Carl T. Bergstrom seeks to address this concern. In this book summary, you'll learn about the various forms of bullshit, their roots in ancient philosophy, and their modern adaptation through the misuse of data, statistics, and graphics. With compelling examples and a focus on skepticism, this summary will provide you with the tools to identify and debunk misinformation in various aspects of your life. Beware the Bullshit Crisis In 1998, British physician Andrew Wakefield published a now-discredited study suggesting a link between the MMR vaccine and autism, leading to a significant anti-vaccine movement. This type of widely propagated misinformation, known as bullshit, is not a new phenomenon, as even ancient philosopher Plato condemned rival philosophers for promoting false ideas. With the advent of modern technology, social media, and the ease of disseminating information, we face a critical battle against the rampant spread of bullshit. It is crucial to remain vigilant and take action against misinformation for the sake of maintaining an informed society. The publication of Andrew Wakefield's heavily flawed study in The Lancet sparked a widespread belief in a connection between the MMR vaccine and autism, which proved to be entirely false. Despite the study being eventually retracted in 2010, its impact has been tremendous, fueling an anti-vaccine movement and even resulting in lower vaccination rates in the United States. Bullshit is anything but recent. Ancient Greek philosopher Plato accused the sophists of peddling it in their quest to triumph in philosophical debates, despite the validity of their arguments. The 21st century, however, creates an abundant stage for bullshit to grow. Contemporary falsehoods often masquerade as scientific research or seemingly irrefutable evidence, like photographs, making them all the more dangerous. For instance, after the Boston Marathon bombing in 2013, a story circulated on social media with a photo claiming that an eight-year-old girl from Sandy Hook Elementary School had been killed in the bombing. The tale was shared over 92,000 times but was entirely fabricated. This illustrates the power of technology and social media in amplifying false information. Combine this with hyperpartisan news networks, mass production of fake news, and the ease of manipulating images, and we face a colossal bullshit crisis. To preserve a knowledgeable society, it is essential to recognize and combat the spread of misinformation, taking action to ensure that truth prevails. Exposing Bullshitters Bullshitters thrive on impressing and persuading people, often disregarding the actual truth. They use language, statistics, and graphics to make their lies appear more truthful. Science sociologist Bruno Latour's concept of black boxes is a prime bullshitting method, which involves treating complex processes as objective facts without questioning the data being used. Recognizing an experiment's flawed data and questioning the black box processing can help unveil pure bullshit found in such scenarios. What defines bullshit? Authors suggest that it is born out of a drive to impress or sway people. The bullshitter is more concerned with winning an argument than sharing the truth. They rely on language, statistics, and graphics to shower their audience with seemingly trustworthy information. In essence, Bullshitters work to persuade others to believe something is true, with little regard for the actual evidence. A popular bullshitting technique is the use of black boxes, as described by science sociologist Bruno Latour. It starts with gathering data, feeding it through a complex process like an algorithm, which serves as the black box. The outcome is often assumed to be an objective fact without any scrutiny. However, there is often much to criticize, even without understanding the black box's inner workings. First and foremost, examine the data being used. Consider a 2016 experiment that claimed to prove criminals and non-criminals had different head shapes, verified by an algorithm. The study pointed out the slight differences in nose-mouth angle and lip curvature between the two groups. 
But the critical observation here is that the study used government-issued ID photos for criminals and professional headshots for non-criminals. It's rather apparent that people are more likely to smile in a professional headshot than in an ID photo. Thus, the flawed data set renders the study's results useless. One can refute the study without even understanding the algorithmic black box. Were the study's authors deliberately deceptive? Probably not. However, their determination to prove their hypothesis made them overlook their flawed data, leading to the presentation of pure bullshit. Misinterpreting Correlations It's crucial to understand that not all correlations between two variables imply causation. Media outlets often misinterpret scientific studies, leading to false conclusions. For instance, a study may show a correlation between positive self-esteem and having a first kiss before college, but that doesn't prove one causes the other. Similarly, a 2018 Zillow report exhibited a correlation between rising house prices and lower fertility rates in women under 30, however, this does not imply causation. It's crucial to interpret correlations cautiously, considering possible underlying factors, and acknowledge that sometimes, correlations don't reveal significant information. The fascinating web of correlations doesn't necessarily signify causation. For example, research discovering links between positive self-esteem and having had a first kiss before college raises a question, does one cause the other or are they merely outcomes of an entirely different factor, like romantic relationships? This prevalent form of misinformation is often amplified by the media's role in reporting. Well-intentioned studies end up making headlines that exaggerate claims with buzzwords like cause and effect. A notorious example of such distortion revolves around the 2018 report by Zillow, which pointed out a correlation between cities with increasing house prices and lower fertility rates in women under 30. The study merely illustrated a connection without asserting causation, but media reporting quickly jumped on the inferring link bandwagon. In the quest for compelling stories, it is not uncommon for press outlets to overlook subtleties from the original study. Context and potential underlying factors, such as the impact of financial concerns and career choices on the decision of having children, might be linked to housing and parenting preferences. The result is a distortion of findings, where correlation is misconstrued as causation. It is also vital to remember that correlations don't always indicate meaningful relationships between variables. For instance, plotting autism prevalence against organic food sales reveals a tight correlation in recent years, but suggesting a connection would be absurd. Such cases highlight the importance of critically interpreting correlations instead of jumping to oversimplified conclusions. Beware of deceptive numbers. One evening, Author Carl found himself examining a cocoa packet that claimed to be 99.9% .9 caffeine-free, which seemed great until he realized that coffee itself is also 99.9% .9 caffeine-free. This highlights how numbers can easily be manipulated to convey a specific message. An alarming Breitbart report from 2017 stated that 2,139 DACA recipients had been convicted or accused of crimes. However, this figure represented less than one in every 300 of the total 700,000 people. In reality, there's a higher chance of a U.S. citizen being incarcerated than a DACA recipient accused of a crime. Similarly, the Lancet Press release suggested that drinking one alcoholic drink daily raised the risk of alcohol-related health problems by 0.5%. This may seem significant, but the risk only increased from 1% to 1.005%. It's crucial to understand the difference between percentage differences and percentage point differences, as presenting numbers in certain ways can produce misleading impressions without resorting to lies. Always stay vigilant when interpreting numbers. Unmasking selection bias. Statistics are pervasive, but they often stem from biased samples. Selection bias can have a significant impact on the interpretation of data and is a key challenge in obtaining reliable statistics. An ideal sample should be neutral and representative of the entire population to avoid distorted results. Obtaining truly random samples is a complex task, demanding caution when interpreting the numbers you come across daily. Ever wondered how Dutch men came to be known as the tallest in the world? 
The answer lies within statistical sampling techniques. Much of the data we encounter is based on samples drawn from the population, which can lead to biased conclusions if the sample is not entirely representative. Selection bias occurs when the data used for testing is not neutral, resulting in distorted findings. To illustrate selection bias, consider a hypothetical scenario questioning whether attractive men possess flawed personalities. Assuming there's no actual correlation between appearance and character flaws, filtering out undesirable individuals from the data set would create the appearance of a relationship. This erroneous correlation arises from selection bias. Another example can be found in car insurance advertisements claiming customers save hundreds of dollars by switching providers. The truth is, people are more likely to switch if significant savings are involved, leading to a distorted, unrepresentative sample. In such cases, it is crucial to examine the data and assess the presence of selection bias before drawing conclusions. In clinical trials, selection bias appears in the form of data censoring, such as participants dropping out of a study due to side effects. Incomplete data collection results in skewed findings, potentially leading to false interpretations. Thus, ensuring that samples are random and representative is integral to obtaining reliable results. Selection bias is a pervasive issue, requiring a critical examination of statistical data. By understanding and considering the impact of biased samples, smarter decisions can be made in interpreting the numbers we face daily. Unmasking Big Data's Flaws Graphic designers can create intricate, entertaining diagrams with modern technology, but these visuals may not always accurately represent the information they contain. As technology advances, the rise of big data and machine learning presents its own challenges. Large datasets, algorithms, and seemingly impressive correlations sometimes fail to properly analyze statistics, leading to faulty conclusions. It's essential not to be swayed by the glitz of big data, the validity of the fundamentals is still crucial. Creative and detailed diagrams, like a goat-based chart contour to the outline of a ram's horn or a themed subway map, can be great fun, yet their appearance may belie a weak structure or incorrect proportions. In the data visualization world, an attractive appearance does not guarantee accuracy. Likewise, even the most conventional-looking graphs may not be as trustworthy as they seem, especially if the axes do not align properly or display skewed proportions. In addition to the visualization pitfalls, we face challenges arising from the surge in big data. With massive datasets feeding algorithms, we now have the ability to teach machines a wide range of tasks, from recognizing faces to trading stocks. This process, known as machine learning, is an instance of the enigmatic black box we often encounter. But beware, machine learning can generate erroneous results that are hilariously far from the truth. Take the case of a machine that was supposed to identify unhealthy chests based on x-rays, but instead learned to recognize one particular scanning machine and failed to perform well beyond that limited scope. Another notorious example involved Google's attempt at predicting flu trends across the United States. Relying on search terms, Google's algorithm ended up correlating unrelated terms, such as high school basketball, to the spread of flu. Consequently, the algorithm's flu predictions worsened over time. The algorithm's retrospective flu correlations were promising, but as the adage goes, correlation does not imply causation. And when it came to looking forward, the algorithm stumbled. The valuable potential of machine learning cannot be overstated, but a discerning eye is still necessary to distinguish between valid data analysis and mere bullshit. In the world of data analysis, it's vital to cut through the flashy veneer of modern technology and dig deeper. The foundational integrity of the data is the key to accurate and meaningful conclusions. So do not be swayed by the allure of big data and machine learning, instead, remember that the strength of the underlying data is what truly matters. Unmasking Scientific Bullshit Science continually corrects itself, making it an evolving process rather than a fixed truth. However, modern scientific systems are fraught with issues like selection bias, p-hacking, and unscrupulous reporting. 
These imperfections open the door for manipulation and allow bullshit to seep into the scientific community. To navigate this maze, one must approach claims made in small journals with skepticism and be aware of the inherent vulnerabilities in current scientific practices. Science is an ever-evolving field with the ability to self-correct. As discoveries are made, studies are conducted to verify results, inching us closer to understanding the world around us. Science isn't about fixed truths, but rather the accumulation of experimental findings up to this point. However, today's scientific landscape is plagued with pitfalls and biases. For example, scientific publication often suffers from selection bias, as studies with positive results are more likely to be published, while those with negative or failed outcomes remain hidden. This is just one of the many ways bullshit creeps into the scientific system. Another aspect that muddles scientific findings is the pervasive use of p-hacking, which manipulates numbers to achieve a desirable p-value considered statistically significant. Goodhart's law explains this phenomenon, stating that a measure becomes ineffective the moment it turns into a target, pushing people to manipulate the system in their favor. Moreover, the media's role in reporting scientific research cannot be ignored. With only a small fraction of research making it to the headlines, media outlets gravitate toward flashy findings and tend to overlook lesser-known journals. This emphasizes selection bias and further distorts our understanding of scientific progress. Less prestigious journals contribute to the problem by being less discerning in their publication criteria, often prioritizing payment over research quality. To navigate the labyrinth of contemporary scientific practices, skepticism becomes an essential tool. Be especially cautious of grand claims in obscure journals, if a result held merit, it would likely be published in a more reputable source. By recognizing these issues, we can better identify and scrutinize scientific bullshit in our quest for knowledge. Bullshit Busting Techniques the key to identifying inaccurate or misleading information is to begin by asking three questions, just like a journalist would, who is the source, how did they obtain the information, and what are they trying to sell. In addition, be cautious of information that seems too good to be true and think about its plausibility. Fermi estimations can help quickly approximate correctness. Be aware of confirmation bias, understand the difference between correlation and causation, and remain skeptical of information from unreliable online sources. When encountering such misinformation, call it out respectfully and politely, as it's more effective in changing someone's mind. Journalists may not be perfect, but they have one practice worth emulating. To determine the validity of a claim, ask three essential questions, who is the source of the information, how did they acquire it, and what is their goal in presenting it. This path isn't the only way to expose falsehoods, but it's certainly a good starting point in our ongoing struggle against misinformation. Too good to be true, is a phrase we've all heard, and more often than not, it's absolutely accurate. If you come across a piece of information that seems implausible, there's a high chance it's false or misleading. To check the plausibility of a claim, use Fermi estimations, quick, rough approximations that can provide a general idea of whether data seems correct. By briefly considering the bigger picture, you can quickly sniff out potential falsehoods. Another weapon against misinformation is staying vigilant about confirmation bias, our inclination to trust information that confirms our pre-existing beliefs. Keep an extra critical eye on any data that appears to validate your own stance. It's also crucial to understand the difference between correlation and causation. Just because two trends appear connected doesn't mean one caused the other, there might be an entirely separate reason behind each occurrence. Exercise caution when interacting with dubious online sources such as Twitter, where the legitimacy of information can be questionable. So, what should you do when you uncover falsehoods? Call them out, but always remember to be polite and considerate. After all, everyone makes mistakes, and a gentle approach is usually more effective in changing someone's mind. As we have seen, bullshit is rampant in our data-driven world, and it is essential to recognize and challenge it. 
By understanding the mechanisms behind misinformation and using skepticism, we can avoid falling victim to misleading statistics, biased data, and deceptive graphs. The key to combating bullshit is adopting a questioning attitude, remembering that correlation does not imply causation, and being extra cautious with unreliable online sources. Most importantly, when calling out misinformation, always be polite and respectful. By remaining vigilant and open-minded, we can help promote a more accurate and informed world.